Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. We talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. I'm your host, Jeffrey. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. Now, we got the AP preseason top 25 poll in college basketball. And let's go through the top 25 teams and see if these teams are ranked probably where they should be. Obviously, we don't have any data to go off these teams and no team has played yet. But let's go down these teams and see where they, the uh, AP voters rank them. Now, North Carolina is the number one team in college basketball in the preseason. And that's not a surprise because North Carolina – uh, was a team that made the national championship game last year. They brought all their starters back, Caleb Love, Leaky Black, R.J. Davis, and Armando Baycott. They all return. They have a fantastic recruiting class, and that is why North Carolina is the number one team to start the season, and it makes a lot of sense. Gonzaga is at number two. Obviously, Drew Timmy is back, and that helps Gonzaga out a lot. They're obviously having to replace some players that made it went to the draft, but Gonzaga still has a great team, and they brought in some transfers. So Gonzaga still should be a really good team. And still looking for that proverbial first national championship. Houston is number three. Obviously, Kelvin Sampson's done a great job with Houston. Marcus Sasser returns uh, from injury, and they have a great recruiting class. Jarris Walker is a great recruit. Houston's got a lot of talent and Houston should be able maybe to contend for a Final Four, maybe even a championship this year. Kentucky's at number four, the National Player of the Year in college basketball. Oscar Sheepway returns. He was fantastic last year. He was the first National Player of the Year to return in college basketball since Tyler Hansborough at North Carolina, and he is a fantastic player. And uh, in Kentucky – has a lot of other players like Jacob Toppin who could improve, and obviously they have severe Wheeler back, so Kentucky is definitely in, a, in the hunt for a turnaround after the surprising loss to St. Peter's last year. Kansas is, and Baylor are both number five from the Big 12. Uh, AP voters cannot decide which team was better. Obviously, both Kansas and Baylor are fantastic team. Bill Self has got Kansas rolling after winning the national title, but they, do, they did lose some players, but they still have a lot of talent, as Kansas always does. And Baylor obviously has been fantastic story with their coach Scott Drew and he's really turned Baylor around after Baylor has been one of the worst uh, programs in college basketball until the last few seasons and he has really made Baylor a great program patience pays off Dukes at number seven obviously John Shires in his first season as the Duke head coach and Duke is trying to replace the great Mike Krzyzewski and now you got John Shire they have the number one recruiting class in the country which is going to help them out and Duke is still definitely in the hunt for national titles every single season. UCLA is at number eight. Mick Cronin's really done a great job at UCLA. Obviously, Johnny Juzang is gone, but they still have Hami Haquez, and they still have Tiger Campbell, so UCLA should be fine. They had a great recruiting class, and they are definitely the favorite to win the Pac-12. Creighton's at number nine. Now, obviously, Creighton is a team that a lot of people are surprised are in the top ten, but Creighton has... Uh, kept every great player that they had from last year. Greg McDermott's a great coach for Creighton, and they got Arthur Kaluma back, and they got Ryan Kalkbrenner back, and Trey Alexander. They got a fantastic team, and they brought in Baylor Shireman from South Dakota State, one of the best three-point shooters in the country, and that's really going to help out Creighton, so I definitely see why they're in the top ten. To round out the top ten, we have Arkansas. Arkansas is one of the – better SEC teams lately now that Eric Musselman is the head coach and, he, and Arkansas has like the number two recruiting class in the country and they have a lot of fantastic players so Arkansas is definitely worthy of a top 10 ranking Tennessee's right behind from the SEC at number 11 Rick Barnes has been steady he's he's been the coach that's always does great in the regular season but they have not won games in the tournament that's the one hurdle Tennessee wants to climb but obviously they got Zakai Ziegler back, Santiago Vescovi. Tennessee's a great team, and they should be able to compete in the SEC this year and hopefully for them be able to go farther in the tournament this year. Texas is at number 12. Obviously, Chris Beard coming up from Texas Tech a couple years ago. Now it's been two years since he's been at Texas Tech, and Chris Beard has made Texas a lot better than they were under uh, Shaka Smart is now at Marquette. Obviously, Shaka Smart did good at Texas, but he wasn't able to win in the tournament, which is also why – Texas got rid of Rick Barnes, who's now at Tennessee. But Chris Beard, he's going to have to get Texas further in the tournament. People are going to be completely satisfied with him there at Texas. But so far, he's brought in great recruiting classes and good transfer portal additions. So Texas is definitely looking up in the talented Big 12. 
a surprising team at number 13, Indiana. Indiana has not been ranked in years, but Indiana with Mike Woodson at head coach, he's really turned the program around. He's brought Trace Jackson Davis back, one of the best players in college basketball, and they got a, a plethora of starters back in Xavier Johnson and Race Thompson. And they got a talented uh, five star, two five stars, and Jalen Hutchinson and Malik Renault coming in from the high school ranks. Indiana could be a really, really good team this year. They are the favorite to win the Big Ten. They are going to have to shoot the ball better because they've been poor at shooting lately. But if Indiana can get that sorted out, Indiana could be really good. And they are ranked for the first time in four years at number 13. TCU is at number 14. TCU has Mike Miles back, and they have. Eddie Lumpkin back. He's a big, massive center who's only improving. TCU is a really good team. They've got a lot of great players, and they've, they're they like Indiana's returning most of their roster from last season, which is really good in this age of the transfer portal. And TCU with Jamie Dixon, the head coach, has really turned around. They were one of the better teams in college basketball last year. And TCU had one of their best seasons that they've ever had in program history last year, and it looks like they're going to continue that this season. Auburn's at number 15. Auburn's a really good team. Obviously, the SEC is really crowded with Arkansas and Tennessee and Kentucky and others at the top, but Auburn can't compete in the SEC. Obviously, uh, their head coach, Bruce Pearl, is really good, and he has brought a lot of talent into Auburn, and they're losing Walker Kessler, and they're losing Jabari Smith. They brought in a couple of good transfers, Johnny Broom, and a couple other players that they have. Uh, returning from last year, their guards need to improve. Obviously, their guard play was uh, – a lot of people were skeptical of their guard play, but if they can get that figured out, Auburn will be really good this season. Villanova is the number 16, and this is very interesting because Villanova has been a top-10 program, even a top-5 program the last uh, probably decade, with, plus with Jay Wright at coach. But he decided to retire, and now they got Kyle Neptune at head coach, and it's going to be very interesting to see with Villanova if they're still able to – be play at the high level that they did with Jay Wright as head coach the last 10 plus years. They obviously have a talented freshman in Cam Whitmore, but it's going to be very interesting to see how good Villanova is with Kyle Neptune in his first season as head coach. Arizona's at number 17, the second team from the Pac-12. Arizona's a great team. Uh, Tommy Lloyd's really turned around from the end of the Sean Miller era at Arizona. And obviously, he's got a talented team. He's got Pell Larson. He's got a lot of great players. Obviously, they lost a lot of players like Christian Coloco to the draft but and Dallin Terry, but they have a lot of players returning. And I think Arizona, they've bought, they're one of the best international programs in the country, along with Gonzaga. And obviously, Tommy Lloyd, at head coach, being from Gonzaga, he brought in a lot of that international talent to Gonzaga, and he's continuing that at Arizona. I think Arizona's going to be fine. And they also have Kirk Kreese at guard. He's a fantastic player, and I think Arizona is going to be competing with UCLA for the Pac-12 championship. Virginia is the number 18. Tony Bennett, obviously, after the national championship run that they had, they've been kind of falling off a little bit lately. But Virginia is still a really good team. They brought in Ben Vanderplas. He's a really good uh, transfer guard. And obviously, they uh, they all have Armand Franklin back, and they have uh, Reese Beekman back. So they still have a really good team. But Virginia is going to have to prove that they can return to an elite level of basketball that they have not played at since the 2019 National Championship. 19s at San Diego State. San Diego State is a sleeper team from the Mountain West. They're a really good team. They bring back every player from last year. Matt Bradley's back. Nathan Mintz is back. And uh, Brian Dutcher, head coach, has really done a good job with San Diego State. Number 20 is Alabama. Natos has done a great job with Alabama. Obviously, Alabama is not at the highest level of the SEC where the other SEC programs are, like Kentucky and Arkansas, but they're in that second tier, trying to be in that first tier, and they got a really good team. They've got Brandon Miller, a five-star guard, and they got a lot of great, talented players at Alabama, but it's going to be very interesting to see if they're consistent because last year they beat all the teams that no one thought they were going to beat, and then they lost games most egregiously to Georgia, who didn't even win another SEC game last year except against Alabama. Alabama was very inconsistent. They did not show up to play. So if they can show up to play more consistently, and plus they had some injuries last year. If they have less injuries, they will be a better team. Oregon's at 21, the third team from the Pac-12. Obviously, Dane Allen is one of the most consistent coaches in college basketball. He's a great coach, and he's done a lot of great things at Oregon. They have top talented players at Oregon. They have a five-star in Khalil Ware at center, and he is a great player. And Oregon has a lot of talented guards, so it's going to be very interesting to see if Oregon can compete with Arizona and UCLA for the Pac-12. 
Michigan's at number 22, the second team from the Big Ten. Obviously, the Big Ten's losing a lot of talent from last year, and Michigan's no exception. Jawan Howard has done a good job at Michigan to continue to do what John Beeline did at Michigan. Maybe not maybe at the level John Beeline did, but still, he has kept Michigan consistently as a top program, and he's brought in a lot of talent, including his son, Jet Howard. And obviously, they got Hunter Dickinson back, who declined the draft, and it's going to be very interesting to see if Michigan can compete with Indiana and maybe win the Big Ten. Illinois is at 23. They're the third team from the Big Ten. Obviously, Illinois is a very solid program now under their coach, Brad Underwood. He's been fantastic. Before he was there, Illinois had not been good since the Bill Self era, and Illinois is now a very good program again. And they lost Kofi Cokeburn, and they lost a lot of players. Jacob Grandison transferred to Duke, and they've lost uh, Trent Frazier, but they got tons of transfers, Matthew Mayer from Baylor, and they brought in uh, Terrence Shannon from Texas Tech, and those players are going to really help Illinois out when it comes to trying to win the Big Ten this year. They're a very interesting team. They also have Scott Clark, a five-star freshman who decommitted from Kentucky. It's going to be very interesting to see if Illinois can fuse all that together and make it where that team can win the Big Ten this season. Dayton's at number 24. Obviously, Dayton is a, another program, kind of like San Diego State, not in the Power Five, but Dayton brought all their players back from last year. Some could have transferred to Power Fives. Some could have went pro. Darren Holmes is one of the best players that no one knows about, and he's going to really improve the season for Dayton. Dayton's got a lot of talented players, and Anthony Grant has done a good job at Dayton. Texas Tech is at number 25. They are the last team ranked here, and Texas Tech under Chris Adams has continued to make Texas Tech one of the better programs in the Big 12 now that Chris Beard went to Texas. He's done a good job bringing in a lot of transfers. They have more transfers this year. Obviously, they even have uh, Kerwin Walton from North Carolina. It's going to be very interesting to see if Texas Tech can continue to be a high-level Big 12 program because I don't think they're as talented this year. And plus, they lost Kevin McCuller to Kansas in the transfer portal. But I still think Texas Tech is going to be a very good program. And then the other team votes just on the outside. You've got Texas A&M. Buzz Williams has a really good team. They did not make the tournament. They probably should have made the tournament. They made the NIT, but Texas A&M is a good program. And obviously, they've got a lot of talented players. It can be very interesting to see if they can move up in the SEC. UConn's next. UConn's a good team as well. Obviously, uh, UConn is not as good as they were when Jim Calhoun was head coach, but UConn has still been very consistent. And their head coach, Dan Hurley, has made them one of the continue to be one of the best Big East programs. And obviously their center, Adama Sinogo, is a fantastic center. And one of the best centers in college basketball that's below the top tier of centers behind Oscar Sheetway, Trace Jackson Davis, and Hunter Dickinson, Drew Timmy. Miami is next. Miami is a good program. I made the Elite Eight last year. Jim Laranega has really brought in some transfers, obviously. They brought in Nigel Pack. They still have Isaiah Wong. So Miami is still going to be a really good program this year in the ACC. Purdue is next. Obviously, they lose Travion Williams and they lose Jay Nivey. But, again, Matt Painter is still going to have them playing well. And they still have Zach Eady, and they brought in some uh, decent freshmen. St. Louis is next. I think St. Louis is still going to be a really good team this year. They still have Uri Collins, so that's good news for them. And they have a great chance to win the Atlantic 10. Michigan State's next. Obviously, you got uh, Tom Izzo is one of the best head coaches in college basketball. But I do think that Michigan State is kind of going to be below the top-tier teams in the Big Ten this year because they did not bring in – they don't have a full roster. They didn't bring in their full roster. They only have 10 players they need to probably fill it out and get 13 players. But Tom Izzo is going with 10, and they have some talent, but they did lose a lot of talent last year. Florida State's next. Obviously, Florida State, you have uh, Leonard Hamilton's got a really good team. But last year they had a lot of injuries. They can have less injuries. And the players, especially like Matthew Cleveland and Cameron Fletcher, can really improve. They'll be better. Xavier with Sean Miller, again, I think – that uh, in his first season, he can really make Xavier a better program because they still have Jack Nungy and a lot of the players from last year, and Xavier can maybe compete in the Big East this year. Wyoming, obviously, was really good. They made the tournament. Hunter Maldonado is a great player, and he's back, so Wyoming can be very good in the Mountain West. Ohio State lost a lot of talent, but they brought a lot of transfers in, including Sean McNeil and I, Isaac Likely from Oklahoma State. Sean McNeil is from West Virginia, so Ohio State could be really good under Chris Holton this year in the Big Ten. Iowa loses Keegan Murray, but you still have Chris Murray. Fran McCaffrey's a good coach at Iowa. Obviously, they need to be a better defensive team with their offense is electric, and they can beat any team in any given night in the Big Ten. Rutgers, obviously, is going to take a step back without Ron Harper Jr. and Geo Baker. But they still have Caleb McConnell, and they still have Paul Mulcahy, so Rutgers could still be good in the Big Ten. Florida, he got a new head coach, and Todd Golden, obviously, he don't have uh, Mike White anymore. He left. 
to go to Georgia. So Florida's trying to rebound, but you still have Colin Castleton. And with Colin Castleton, you still have a chance in the SEC. And they brought in some decent transfers. USC is a good uh, example of a program that we don't really know what they're going to do this year. They have a lot of talent. They definitely could be, uh, maybe even be good enough to maybe win the Pac-12, or they could be a team that kind of falls further in the Pac-12. It's going to be very interesting to see. Toledo has a lot of talent, and obviously a lot of people – think that they can win the max it's gonna be very interesting to see if toledo can be can rise up into the top 25 or just good enough to win their conference or, or so forth virginia tech is a good decent program in the acc i think that virginia tech has decent players and they could challenge and maybe be in the top four of the acc but they're gonna to have to improve memphis is a uh, really good program under penny hardaway he's you know, gotten a lot of talented players to Memphis, but the consistency has been key. They did lose a lot of talent from last year, but they got a really, really good transfer guard from SMU and Kendrick Davis, so that will give them a chance to compete. Notre Dame is a uh, solid example of a program that has had a coach and Mike Bray has been there for 20 years and obviously Notre Dame is one of the best programs in college basketball in that time but they've been taking a step back lately but they made the tournament last year behind great freshman Blake Wesley but now they have another great freshman J.J. Starling so it's going to be very interesting to see how good they are this year and UAB rounds out again the other team votes so it's going to be very interesting to see what UAB does this year in Conference USA. Again comment down below what you think about the AP preseason top 25. I think the AP Voters got it about right so far. Obviously, it's going to be kind of hard to tell how good these teams are when they haven't played a game, but it's all going to shake itself out, and the teams who deserve to be ranked will eventually be ranked, and the teams that don't will not. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Like this video down below, and I will see you next time.